Disclaimer. Do not harass, bully, threat, or emotionally harm anyone mentioned in this video. This is just meant to educate everyone. Enjoy the video. Alright, I've done my research. <coughs> Look stuff up on YouTube. You know David Cross, right? The main antagonist of the Elvin and the Chipmunks movie. His life was pretty much ruined because of the Elvin and the Chipmunks movie. Let me start from the beginning. Picture this. You haven't worked in a while, let's say six months. You're thinking to yourself, oh shoot, I might not ever get a job again. Then a job opportunity shows up. And you take it. That's how David Cross got into the whole situation. I would say that doing Alvin and the Chipmunks was less about a paycheck and more about, I had not worked in six months when that job came along and that is a that's the longest i've ever gone without working and it's uh it, it really messes with your head it's by half a year that's really why i took that role <laughs> so he got the job but i'm guessing he didn't think about the long-term percussions because if you didn't know when you are an actor you have to sign a contract saying if i want to make a sequel or a sequel you have to be in it, no matter what. First time, eh, I haven't worked in six months. Let's work on a movie. But all the rest of the times... Two it, movies. Uh, two, yeah. Well, I was contractually obligated to do the second one, but... Uh, contractually anyway. obligated. And, and that was all fine and dandy until someone was out to get him. Two Elephant and the Chipmunks movies were out. Two very successful movies. David asks, Hey, if there's going to be a third movie... Can you at least let me know beforehand? Because I have at least 70 people that rely on me for a job. At the very least, could you let me know beforehand? They say a new movie is going to come out. And then David asks a question again. Do you need me for this movie? Am I going to be in this movie? Do I need to be there? Please let me know. They say, eh, eh, uh, I don't know. We'll see. So he goes to London for his job thing. Keep in mind he doesn't live in London. His manager calls him up and says, Hey, we have a whole bunch of lawyers, which can only mean a, a good thing or a bad thing. His manager then says, You might want to sit down. They need him not for filming, but for rehearsal. And he's, once again, contractually obligated to go. I was already, I was in London getting ready. I was in pre-production on uh, the second series of Todd Margaret and you know I produced that as well as everything else so I've got you know 70 people you know who's have have a job you know are, are, are looking to me and uh, uh, you know relying on me for a job and and we've been asking them because I'm contra I was contractually obligated to do it there's no way to get out of it and uh, we had been asking him for months, am I going to be a part of it because of, cause of Todd Margaret? And they were like, well, we don't know. Kind of go back and forth, never gave us a real answer. And then uh, I remember very well, I was at this department store with my wife, and I get a call. And, you know, there's an eight-hour difference between London. And, and I answer the call. I can see it's my manager. I answer the call. And uh, they're like, hi, David, I have, and then this litany of names, you know, <laughs> agents and, and lawyers and all that stuff uh, online for you. Uh, I was like, and that's only, thank you, that's only good news or bad news. Um, and they said, uh, okay, are you sitting down? So I know it's bad. And then they're like, uh, so Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, is going to happen. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? Uh, and it's happened. They want you there in two weeks. Just crazy. And then I'm like, I can't even uh, physically get. They want me to go to Hawaii for rehearsals. It was just the. It was and and when we pushed back and going, can I get three extra days? Can I go to? I have to go to New York to get clothing. You know, I'm I'm living in London now, and uh, they're like, no, you have to be there for. I mean, just rehearsals. So there was uh, a whole scene, two weeks. Um, or I think it was 12 days on a cruise ship. And initially, the character is only, literally only as scripted, only in a pelican costume mm -hmm. or a, whatever the costume is. 
And I'm like, well, clearly I don't have to go on the cruise ship. I can fly back to London and, you know. Somebody else can be in, in the Pelican costume. Yeah, yeah. And then the woman's like, I remember calling her like begging, pleading, Karen, please. Like, no, you're, you're in the cover set. I'm like, look. And then she said, you have a distinctive walk. <laughs> but also it was, fa- it, was, it was bad logic because before I was, so they eventually had the guy take the, the character take the head off. But it, as scripted, what they were planning was you just see the pelican guy and he's chasing the Dave character or whatever, trying to get the chipmunks or whatever. And uh, they're like, no, you have a distinctive walk. But as scripted, they, you're not supposed to know it's my character until later. So even the audience is not supposed right. to know. Even the audience isn't supposed to know. <laughs> so it's just like, well, now you're just being shitty. And, I, yeah. and you know, and the other thing is, when they said, yeah, you're in it, I mean, I'm all over it. I'm throughout that script. I'm like, well, you guys could have told us months ago. You don't just right. magically come up, insert a character in the 90 pages of a 100 <laughs> yeah. page script. So, what'd you do with Todd, uh, uh, Todd Margaret? Did we, you had to, a, we had to postpone it. Oh, you just kind of put it on hold. And yeah. Said, I am so sorry, David. Like I said in the beginning, do not harass anyone, but shame on you, Karen. And yes, that's her actual name. You can't make this up. Anyways, bah.